Castle Morihisa is a roguelike deck builder game where you need to be strategic when building your deck, playing your cards and choosing the best path available to you. And whilst building combos and synergies can be quite exhilarating and satisfying, the game can be unforgiving. My name is Bruns and these are my top tips on Castle Morihisa so you can perform better and get those wins more often. As usual, these are just my opinions from playing the game for dozens of hours and also gathering some feedback with the community. So let me know in the comments below what your experience has been and what are the tips you might have for people out there playing the game. Hopefully you will find this helpful and if you do, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Tip number one, learn the characters. Castle Morihisa has a roster of four characters, with more to come according to the developers. Each character has their own deck of cards with unique attack, defense, skills and tactics cards. You've got the monk, who goes into the avatar state, uses mantras to stun their enemies and can build some amazing counter combos. Omiyoji relies on summons that give you buffs and can attack your enemies, can make use of leech abilities and also build some combos around void cards. The samurai who's got brutal retaliate attacks and uses Sakura, which in turn can give him several bonuses and synergies with other cards. Sakura will in turn trigger Blossom cards, which if coupled with the right talents can build impenetrable armor. And finally the ninja, who can handle different weapons and unleash devastating combos with them, and also has a really powerful discard mechanic. She can collect Genjutsu, which after a certain stack will give her special cards that can have powerful attacks and blocks. It might be a good idea to try all the different characters at first, so that you can pick one initially that suits your playstyle. You might find that you can get wins more easily with one and take longer to master the other. Although this game borrows several mechanics from other popular games, there are some intricacies quite particular to this game that would only be appreciated if you dedicate your time to it. So take your time, learn the characters and most importantly, have fun. Tip number two. Look at your talent tree. This is one of the unique and most important aspects of this game when compared to others in the genre. A talent tree which will randomize at the start of each game. The way this works is, there is a general talent tree for all the characters, and then there is another one for each of the characters. When you select a character, your unique talent tree will be a 50-50 random combination of the general talent tree and of the character tree. That adds a huge layer of complexity that most people seem to take for granted. Whilst building a synergic deck is the priority, if your talent tree doesn't complement your deck, then you might be missing a trick or five. So whilst you're building your deck, have a look at your talent tree and see what talents might you be able to unlock and then try and combine the knowledge to the cards you've offered throughout the game. You might be pleasantly surprised by the crazy combos you can pull off if the cards on your deck get boosted by your talents. You can literally trigger infinite combos with talents like to the death which will put one card in your hand if you have none. And if you don't see the talents you were hoping for, try and do the best with what you are given. Tip number three, stop and assess. I can tell you now that a lot of the times when I died is because I didn't pay attention to everything that was available to me. This is a turn-based game, so there's no need to rush. Check what cards you have, check your fallen heroes, maybe review your talents and artifacts, because they might be boosting cards you forgot about. Some talents will give you bonuses or damage your enemies just from using one card, so it's always worth to stop, have a look, review, and plan your moves. That will help you to learn to assess risk and eventually become more proficient at the game. You have to try and predict the outcome before you play your cards. If you don't, then you might find yourself restarting the game over and over again very quickly. Tip number four, take the plunge. You will not get any better if you keep avoiding elites or battles in any way. You will only collect cards if you defeat enemies, and defeated elites will grant you with additional talent points, quests, and more. Plus, the only way to succeed more at elite fight is by learning how the AI plays, and it has a very scripted way of playing. The more often you fight them, the more you remember what action they'll take in each turn. Take every opportunity to develop your own skills and completely embrace the game to help you build your confidence. Tip number five. Keep your deck consistent. This has been another one of my downfalls when I started playing the game. I had the most brilliant deck, full of synergies, and greed got the best of me because I got tempted to try too many different skills in one playthrough. Upon taking card after card, suddenly I find myself not drawing the cards that I wanted, only to eventually fail miserably. Keeping your deck consistent might be difficult, but you have ways of doing it more effectively. You can remove cards at the shop, which is always available in between battles, and less commonly, you may also trigger random events and quests, which will allow you to to remove cards. You could also have multiples of the same cards which will ensure you draw those cards into your hands more often. And remember, you don't need to take every card offered to you. Skipping cards sometimes might be the right thing to do. Just think if a card that is being offered can boost your deck or if it takes it a different direction. Keep it consistent. Tip number six. 
Learn to pick your battles. In Kasamori Hisa, you can't see the past to the end. Every time you win a fight, you are given three to four choices of battles, a camp, an artifact, or a random event. It might be tempting to try and take on enemies and elites often in order to build up your deck, collect coins, and talent points. However, it is important to recover your health when you need, and also collect as many artifacts as possible. Artifacts will give you bonuses that are more often than not extremely helpful in many different ways. There is no point going into an elite battle on Act 1 with a basic deck if your health is already low. Take your time to assess your options and what you're given in order to make the best decision. Tip number 7. Manage your coins. In Castle Morihisa, the shop is always available to you in between battles. It might be quite tempting to buy cards with a low price often, and some artifacts and talents will even give you discounts or free cards at the shop. However, just because a card is free doesn't mean you should take it. If that card doesn't synergize with your deck, you might end up spending money to remove it later, or it might actually hinder you during your battles. And remember that whenever you reset or remove cards at the shop, the cost to reset or remove cards will increase for next time. So take that into consideration when using the shop. Tip number 8. Check your library. By checking your library, you can make an informed guess at what cards might be coming next to your hand, which can help you plan. Your library is the deck icon in the bottom left of the screen. It shows you which cards are still to draw, but not the order you will draw them. When your library runs out, your graveyard pile will be reshuffled into a new library. So keep checking what's in there so that you can try and plan your next move. And these are my top tips for anyone playing Castle Morihisa and is struggling to get some wins. I hope you have found this useful and I would love to hear your comments down below and what you're struggling with. Which characters are your favorites and what combos and builds you found work better for you? In the meantime, enjoy the game, be consistent, and I will see you next time. Take care.